I hope you're having an amazing day. My name is Colin. Today, I'm joined once more by Karim Attar, former BD for Unix Gaming. We're going to explore the gaming, let's say, benefits, pros and cons when it comes to tokenizing the game. Obviously, in the crypto market, tokens are a huge play. Yes, they are extremely beneficial in many ways, but there are also some problems. Kareem, initial thoughts on tokens and the games. Yes. So, first of all, hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Kareem, aka Just Kiro. Thanks for having me on, Colin. It's always, always fun. So, question was uh, something about tokens. I already forgot. <laughs> tokens <laughs> and the relative pros and cons to games. Yeah. Cool. So, obvious pro, huge incentive. Con takes away from the focus of the game. Probably sure. the biggest two on the side, like the biggest incentive for tokens for, for the end user, not for the investor, sorry, is um major incentive to play. But then the con is the game starts to feel more grindy and like a factory job than it is a game because if earning is the goal, then that's not a game, that's a job. Hmm. And that's what ultimately the scholars used to do before. And that is what happened with, you know, the play to earn, like, bubble that burst. I mean, we all saw it burst, right? Why do you, you know, think they... gaming guilds are still as huge as of right now when we know the scholar model doesn't work as well? Honestly, it's not, you might not like the answer, but at this point, they're basically just viewed as a huge number of people for for companies to get their hands on like it's a player base easy adoption oh, i like that it's it's a player base like you're talking about yeah. okay this is like like we're, like we're talking about unix the initial community. kickstart of a game perhaps that's exactly. everything yeah you've got two hundred thousand um you uh members in the discord or whatever for unix like that to you in like for for a developer like obviously the numbers aren't one to one, but in your head you're saying that's two hundred thousand potential players for my game. That's why guilds are still quite a force in Web three gaming, and they honestly could do a lot of good should they choose to for the industry in the long term. But it's it's just a player basis. It's like hey, what two hundred thousand people will get their hands on the game. But yeah, it. but there's another <laughs> yeah yeah but th th that's pretty much it because that's the other side of it is I I've spoken to quite a few um people in games that they're not really trying to appeal or appease the guilds you know they don't really care because they know that the majority of this player base is scholars mm. and that's not their audience and those are the games that I look out for because those are the games that I think are going to make it the ones that aren't really looking for the scholars and that they they know that their audience is not those guys they know that they're yeah, not economic based it's yeah, more utility it's, yeah they know based. their audience and it's value and in terms of gameplay exactly so they know that their audience is going to be a fewer is, is going to be a lower number but it's going to be a more dedicated audience so the sure. problem with play to earn was you come for the money you leave for the money yeah, but that makes sense. That's why ultimately these are like test cycles, right? On how these economic models would function. Right. What What is then the discrepancy? I don't know if your understanding stretches that far between a dual token economy and a single token economy. What are your, your thoughts on that? So with a dual token economy, you have a little bit more freedom. Um, there are obviously more factors because you've got double the tokens and you need to do double the tokenomics really uh, because you've got, um your governance token which let which is most likely going to have like a very it's going to have a finite supply um you, you know your axs for example that's a finite supply that's a that's a token that you know you know if you hold enough axs you have a say in the in the function in in, in the direction of things so mm -hmm. that's that and having a slp your second token that's your utility token that's the token that you devote to being you know utilized in the game and and all that stuff i mean for me axie's biggest mistake early on was not having anywhere near enough burning mechanism for how much slp that they were hanging out handing out which is why slp collapsed and by the time that they introduced more burning mechanisms for slp it was too little too late and uh yeah i mean that's that's it like the beauty of having utility token is that now you have this token that isn't really it obviously it's tied to but you know you have your your governance token and and then you have your utility token you have a little bit more margin for error because 
one token going wrong doesn't necessarily mean the other the, 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 the second token is going wrong right and the governance token would be the money token that is quite basic exactly. right it's a right. tradable yeah, that's speculation much, that's like much on the more investor it's, side it so shares when we talk about well i don't really want to say that but i, I, I know I but like, like it, it, yeah, it kind like of functions a, in that same sense Sure, it's like the the market cap valuation of the company, yeah. uh, and usually it's investors holding it, not as much gamers, right? Yeah. When we exactly. would look at the utility token, I think that's like where I'm least aware because as soon as it's inflationary, I don't really care because that's yeah. like a bad model for investors, yeah, right? Hundred percent. Um. So so people play these games, they earn these utility tokens. Uh, you mentioned they burn it to reduce the supply because it's inflationary ultimately right. until uncapped conditions. Uh, yep. The token will become worth less, 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 less until yeah. they're inevitably burned for consumption. It is, what it would, is what would be like inevitable. a good, uh, good utility to, do you have examples of games that have had put in place good utilities? I, okay. Uh, so there were, well, like I, I can't think of a single game that did any, um, that did enough but i can think of a few games that did a part of it right yeah or so, sh certain examples of, of yeah like, so doesn't i'll have give to you be an example global. and i and I, I can give you an example like so all right just a global example uh, but I'll, I'll mention it because dafina for me was actually a really really cool project uh and i enjoyed the game as well Dafina finance it's what, yeah? yeah yeah exactly i actually genuinely enjoyed that game genuinely and it's not my type of game. Like I don't usually like the collectible card auto battler games. I really don't. But I really enjoyed the Fina. Um, but yeah, anyway, um the side the, the, the other thing is so so if you have a, a token that is, you know, your utility token, you know it in infinite supply, you're going to be handing it out like like, you know, candy. I don't know what you people hand out. I don't know. You're just handing it out. Yeah, you're you're handing it out like dollars at a strip club. Well, that was a good example. I'm gonna remember that mm, one. Mm. Yeah, you're, you're handing people you're, you're will just, like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you're just handing you're handing it out. That is an inflationary rate by default. So you need to give the players a reason to spend that money. When you think about governance token, you think about your investors. You're appeasing to mm. them. That's 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 your crowd there. But when you think about utility token, you, you can't really let the investors be part of this equation. You need, but I don't want to be. Why, why would I want to be yeah. part of the utility component if I know that the money exactly. is trash? All I can get is in-game rewards. I don't give a fuck about. Yeah, exactly. So there's there's the problem. Most people didn't really discriminate, make the distinction between the two groups of people, and mm. and the utility token. You need to, if you're gonna you need to be handing it out, and you need to make it feel like it's valuable by not being too generous with it, but also not being too stingy. You know, you get you got to make it feel like, oh, this is valuable, but not impossible. So how do they make it valuable? Because I, so, I want to know the utilities so, a, a game could bring. Yeah. So obviously value of utilities to token specifically, obviously depends on the success of the game and, and et cetera, et cetera. And also to maintain its value, there needs to be enough to do in the game and enough reasons and enough. So what you could know, you do in the game with for, these tokens? For, for burning, you could do anything. So one of my biggest issues with with a lot of the early games um, was a stamina. Like you can play X amount of games to you mm. know. I did. If somebody told me I can only play five games of Call of Duty a day, I have to wait twenty four hours to play again. I I would slap them in the face. <laughs> you know. What so I mean? using like, the utility token to recharge the stamina would be a good one. Boom. Boom. There you That's go. That's exactly where I was. I mean, I I would say get that get out of this get get rid of the stamina system altogether. But if you're gonna have it there, at least make it very easy for the players to get basically infinite stamina by burning their tokens. And that way, if the game is good enough on its own, you won't have to worry about it being hyperinflationary because everybody will be burning the token to play because that's what they want. Makes sense. What what are other examples of, of burn mechanisms? More more burning mechanisms like skins? Include, ah, exactly, yeah. Skins. Because you can give people skins and breeding for, for games where it applies. Uh, see, one of the biggest things I hated about the breeding systems and stuff is the fact that it demanded AXS as well because they were trying to burn some AXS. Mm. So I really don't think, I really, really think that you got to leave. And that, so that's a combination the of the governance token and the utility the token utility. at the same yeah, time. That was but it makes sense thing. because I think those NFTs hold governance token value on the marketplace. So it does yeah. make sense because otherwise you, with let's say the skins, if they're non-tradable skins or you can't trade them, then if you have the utility token, make it into a, a non-governance uh, backed NFT. 
I right? would you can only always... sell it for other utility tokens. Then it yeah. makes sense that as soon yeah. as you incorporate the governance token in terms really of money think... value, then yeah, you need to cut the chain somewhere. Yeah, uh, that's why I really think governance tokens need to stay the hell out of the situation. Like governance tokens, like in my head, you just treat them. I know, I know, I know you don't like calling them shares, but you got to treat them like that. They don't have a function within the game. They don't have the same kind of utility as the utility token. They can't. So how, how does the, uh, that's a good question on the token side of things. Because how also does, governance token, so they, you can't really earn in the game, right? So asking people to use Yeah, yeah this is about is what I was about asking, to say. On yeah. the token side of things, when people play like scholars, right, for the uh, incentives of money, right, we, we all agree with the play to earn, that's like a bad thing, right? But even on the gamers, right, there must be an on off ramp of, of fiat currency to get their yield. If it's only utility based, uh, utility token based, then there's never that, that bridge that you can make until fiat because it's inflationary. So the fiat value will be relatively low. There needs oh, to yeah. be a swap between utility element and governance right between the steps so like an nft switch or whatever like like with the axi breeding or because ultimately they breed axes they level them up or whatever then they sell the axi for governance and they cover the, the governance is sold on the on the on mm. the on the decks for ethereum for example right so, and then ethereum is sold for fiat that's the money flow yeah. right so what what is the element there where you would say there has to be a mechanic there for an on off ramp solution for that. Ultimately, it can't only be the utility token side of things, because at some point, people that do see the competitive element to, let's say, bet on a game, bet on a tournament, how do they get their, their fiat ultimately, which is right. what they so, ideally desire? All right. So I'm not even going to pretend to be an expert on the whole on ramp, on -ramp and off ramp situation, but I, like I said, I'm not saying, um, like uh, you, you should be able to absolutely should be able to withdraw and 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 your utility and exchange it for free add on exchanges. I mean, I, I'm kind of already in this in my head assuming that you're listed on like some kind of like sex somewhere. Like you're listed on a centralized exchange, whether it's Binance, Bybit, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I, in my head you're listed. Um, so that's to me, it's like, okay, Well, even if you're on a decentralized exchange, as long as, yeah, it even, swap, yeah, even if fine. you're decentralized, yeah. So in my head, this is already like the, 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 the people that know what they're doing with that side of the business, I've already built it. Like, I'm not even going to pretend to know how to build an on-ramp or, 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 or provide liquidity. Like I, I'm just assuming that liquidity has been provided. You know, you've been listed on a DEX, your, your, your circulation, it's a, there's already a secondary market for it. Otherwise you know, there's no real hmm. value. So I'm just assuming that these things are in place already. Um, the, the, the real thing is, is like, it, it, it is inflationary by nature, but if you create enough incentives to not, um, to, to, to burn them, then while it is inflationary by nature, there is more incentive to use the token than there is to sell the token. Obviously there's going to be times where, oh, it's getting really valuable now. And now this, um, you know, it's now become more worth it to to to, to sell it than to, to burn it in the game and and this and that's just a, a natural ebb and flow of things yeah because if they if they keep selling then the price goes down and then you and then the it, earning and becomes now, more and now, attractive and now it becomes more more attractive to just use the token in the game to play until so ultimately you know, is it not truly about token economics which is tokenomics by presetting the desired expectations. I think the XE right. killer was XE itself in the poor tokenomic structure on the yield. Yeah. They should have changed the yield bond curve according to the amount of users playing. With the amount right. of users playing and grinding, all of a sudden they created hyperinflation, Absolutely. which then pulled the price down. And well, all, yeah. well yeah. It, 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 it generated a business model of mass NFTs, which True. are being sold at the top of the market. And that was unsustainable. They should have realized that very soon, increase the yeah. cost of the breeding, slow down the price movement. But ultimately, if, if you're making, yeah. if, you, if, you, if you make uh, 10 million a day, uh, you don't want to slow you it don't down really, during yeah, that exactly. process. It's a very difficult and decision. I, I like I don't I'm like I can't put like any hate or judgment on the on the team there for Axie because like at the end of the day they were no but these are just like, facts they were, I think yeah, I would yeah, do they the were, same they, thing we, but it's definitely not the first. best thing for the for the for the long term and you know no, this yeah I mean yeah that I don't think anybody was was under the impression that their growth was sustainable and it would continue going that way for long I think everybody I think they all knew like they they're not they're not they're not 
it completely um what's the word i'm looking for stupid stupid they're not stupid yeah they're not stupid <laughs> <laughs> they're not stupid they like they they have to have seen it coming and uh yeah they just didn't adapt fast enough because of the I mean, why would you? Don't fix it if it's not broken. Like we know that it's gonna break down the line, but right now it doesn't need to be fixed. Ultimately, if the if the signal on your dashboard when you're driving indicates that there's a lack of engine power, it's not broken your car, but it's an indication that it will soon right. break. Like you, so do, yeah, do you, you stop you check and get it. it fixed, or do you just keep driving away for the boom? Yeah, I mean, th- those are your options. I would personally, yeah. I would personally probably, uh, I'd probably stop and get it fixed. But well, it depends like, on the equation, right? If, if, if right, you would yeah. drive would a Lamborghini, then probably I would stop and get it fixed. But if I right. drive a fucking Prius and, and somebody gives me $100 an hour to drive him around, fuck it. I drive that shit until it breaks. Exactly. 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 I mean, you depends said it better than I was going to. Uh, yeah. yeah I was, like, you, honestly, you it's, a, it's, it's, you, it's just a decision you have to make. And, and also, like, it's so easy to sit here and judge Axie, but because it's all hindsight. It's like they were just the biggest sure. thing at first. But like honestly, what they did while while some things obviously did not go right, it's all been for the benefit of the industry because we're all learning. Like we are all literally watching these events unfold for the first time in history. So we're watching mm. them, you know, make these mistakes and learn. So now the next person that comes along will learn from them. And so what, and what then, would you and do? Then I mean, like, forget about yeah. What just happened with the audio? So, so let's forget about no, the fact that I wouldn't build Axie. Yeah, I think your mic swapped. Like, I'm gonna go ahead and forget. Like, I'm gonna go ahead and pass. Like, if it was me, I would, have, what would I have done different? I would have built a shooter. So that's. <laughs> but if I was in charge of the Axie team, what would I have done different? I would have honestly been trying everything I can to make it so that there's more and more incentive to play the game and to burn SLP. That would have been my number one focus, like from the get go. Um, it would have been wouldn't like, it just be all, easier to adjust the yield? I, I honestly I don't know. You could adjust right, the man. yield, but but see, there's a like there's a little bit of psychology. And then you slow it. down the momentum. Like, that's it. That plus the psychology behind it is if people start seeing smaller numbers, they're less incentivized to play, even though those smaller numbers may be more more valuable to them. They're not earning as much as they were. It's a psychology. It's like the same reason MMORPGs are so addictive. I mean, you're a WoW player. You know more than anyone how satisfying it is to see those numbers go up from like 500 to 5,000 and then 500,000 crits. And, you know, it's satisfying. Yeah, it depends. So so they they did on that end, they did a merge, right? So the level cap, it was all reduced in like a two-week time frame just because right. the, the numbers went up to a ridiculous amount. I think it's relative yeah. to the consumption value. So right. if you would earn, let's say, 100 tokens a day that becomes 105 110 and the value linearly goes up on the nfts right. as well in terms of what is required to breed them because right. that was the model then it makes sense because ultimately if you if you uh, gain 10 percent a day let's say to make the math easy and the value increase on the nfts demand side is 11 percent, then the user loses one percent without knowing it yeah so I mean, I'll be honest, a lot of their mistakes come from their area of focus. Like they were so hyper focused on making these numbers work that they forgot about giving enough. Like honestly, their biggest mistake was to just not give enough incentive to burn SLP. They made it too attractive to sell. And even if you did want it, eventually it became so like the the, the value of SLP went down so much and they had to put in place all these new limits and caps and earning caps. They had to do all of this all to protect the value of SLP when all they really should have done was like, dude, forget it. It's the utility token. We know it's hyperinflationary. All we have to do now, instead of starting to limit the players and limit the game experience and gating it behind, you know, stamina and own more axes if you want to play more, don't do that. That's so anti-gamer. That's so anti-consumer. All of that behavior. All because right yeah, now, but I think at is- that point, it's already the the poor tokenomics, which right. at that point, you're basically your game is imploding. So it's just damage control. And, at and that the point. only. But the thing is, the only people that are going to save that game are the players. So why be anti-consumer about your? But they're behavior? not. They're not players. They're grinders, right? They're, that was the, the, the big they're thing grinders. that is shot. All right. Let, let me say this. Right. Let me ask you this. One yeah. sentence on tokenomics. I remember what I said. One sentence. Yeah. Maybe two, but not more than two. Okay. On tokenomics, okay. where you would say, um, "I'm happy uh, if people understand this. Why tokenomics? Tokens in general, right? On games." Right. 
are so important, but this is the one pro and this is the one con. Okay. So number one. That's two sentences since you're done. One. <laughs> So the tokenomics is like utility token is so easy to think about them if you're a gamer or whatever is to think about them as the in-game currency that you buy with fiat anyway for most of your games. That's the way I like to think about it. And if you're doing if you're spending money and time for this for this currency, then there needs to be something that you want to spend it on. Like I'm not that's that's it. You need to have incentive. Tokenomics is so important because they make they make they make you feel progress. Yes earning but also progress also you're excited to, to burn and and it's it's part of the game you know earning and earning gold and wow is part of the experience some people devote everything to, to, to grinding gold and selling it that's just a you have a choice you know there's more than one way to play a game and to enjoy it i'm not i'm never going to tell somebody how to enjoy it the con is it starts from the development side of things if that's the focus then you've already shot yourself in the foot because mm. all of a sudden you've devoted all this energy and time and, and effort into building this model and incentive to burn and uh, you've forgotten about the underlying kind of foundation of everything which is build a good game and build a game that people want to continue playing regardless of the value of the token if your value if your token is is is, is worth like less than a luna or you know and pe the, it shouldn't really be the 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 incentive like a, to the gamer or to the majority of them anyway not that, that that token if you're building a game to be a game and not just a guild scholarship model Farm. then the, yeah it, it, instead of just like, it's not it's not it's, it's not a job most people aren't going to give a crap about the value of the token hey kareem yeah remember me did i say two minutes or two sentences uh i'll be honest <laughs> You knew this, this was going to happen. It's my favorite part about you. The <laughs> you red knew thing. this was going to happen. <laughs> Let's cut it here. Tokens on games, interesting component, difficult component will push the Very evolution. As, as, we, as we've seen, to token economics is one of the most complex things because the economy can be simulated, but it is never validated until it's been run through the experience. Absolutely. So we'll leave it at that. Exe, guys, you did a great job. No trash on you. For the like, next one, we're going were, to talk were... fundraising. Still tokens. Yeah. Cool, perfect. Will be interesting. Actually, guys, like no hate because you guys showed us what to do and what not to do, and that's that's not a dig on you. That's incredible. You progress. That's how it you is. You kickstarted the industry. Everybody, for, whether it's yeah, shut up, <laughs> everybody. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you in the next one.